speak in uh, international language. Yeah, yes. 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 That's Mandarin. Thank you, Big Bye. Okay, brothers. Uh, are we side? We are having this camp because you want to. You want to strengthen each other. And, and in this year, our team is from First Peter chapter two verse nine, which says, "For you are, for you, what does it say? For you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people of His own, so that you may declare this what." Only these people here are attentive. He didn't pay the fee. No money, no money. Okay, there are two things that we can take from the from the Bible passage. You are chosen, and then so that you can declare. Being chosen means there's some kind of benefit that we're enjoying, some kind of privilege, some kind of some kind of specialty because you are chosen we are chosen and when we are chosen we have to declare what god has, has given us the good things the even the the failures that we had we have to declare because we have experienced this wonderful life right amen yes. amen. 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 amen all of us are chosen in a way that is special for for each one of us we are chosen to be the husband of jacqueline Right? Yeah. You're chosen to be the husband of Marcia. And all of us have our particular uh, particular call to be chosen. And right now, because the the passage has been uh, has been taken from first Peter, let's look at uh, Saint Peter as being an example for our for our afternoon. Remember in the, the first time that Jesus called Peter was when? when he was fishing right yes when he was fishing uh jesus was was uh jesus was being pressed on by the by the people when he was teaching at the near the lake and so what he did was he got on one of the boats that simon peter has that simon peter owns <coughs> and so what he did is push himself out into the lake so he can teach the people so it's similar to this probably this kind of setting and people are pressing on Jesus and then Jesus went out into the boat and when he finished speaking he said to Simon Peter go out into the deep and lower your nets for a catch what did Simon Peter say he said master we have fished all night and cut and caught nothing but at your word I will lower down the nets he said, get down into the deep. So Peter <coughs> immediately followed. So when they went to the went to the water again, they caught a lot of fish and the boats were so heavy that they had to call their companies to help them out and bring them to the shore. When Peter saw this, he was amazed and he said to and he said to Jesus, Master depart from me for I am a sinful man and when Je when Jesus heard that he said do not be afraid from now on you will be cash will be fishing men and they left their nets uh, John the sons of Zebedee and James and they followed him what can we take from what we from what the gospel says Jesus chose these particular men who are like us Jesus chose simple men they are not learned men they are simple men like us and he chose Peter one of them is Peter and when Peter <coughs> heard it he first doubted right because who's an expert on fishing Jesus or Peter Peter Peter, Peter. <coughs> because he's a fisherman that's his profession but then he chose he chose to follow but then he realized that there is this holy man in front of him and he says depart from me for I am a sinful man what can we learn from this Peter knew that he was being called and yet he knew his defects 
in spite of the defects, these defects, he responded and they left everything and followed. So all of us here, who among us doesn't have any defect? Crucify <laughs> 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 him! Crucify him! Let's feed him, son! <laughs> oh, I want to answer me. <laughs> so Peter followed and then he, he replied to what, God, what Jesus is asking or telling him to follow him. All of us have defects. We come together so that we can strengthen one another, right? We yes. come together to enjoy this time, yeah. to have yeah. some time out. But then it's also a good time for us to reflect. Because we have our own particular strengths. We have our own particular weaknesses. But sometimes we look upon most of the time our strengths. But in fact, the weaknesses are hindering us to step forward. <coughs> It is hindering us to realize that we can still be better men. That we can still be better husband, better ha better wife, uh, better fathers, and better brothers, and better employees. Because we are called to be salt and light of the world. And if we are not able to do that because we are not taking note of our weaknesses, then we are not worthy to come into to the presence of the Lord because we're not changing ourselves because we would like to be men of honor right we would like to be men of honor we'd like to be said that I have raised my son in the image and likeness of God I have raised my family I have worked and ho I have worked my life so that I can give them a good future but not just materially but preparing them for the kingdom of God. And so brothers, I'd like to suggest the word honor this afternoon because we would like to live our life in honor, right? We wouldn't like to live our life in shame. And so, let's be cheers. 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 And so, <coughs> Brothers, he who chose us wants us to declare his marvelous deeds because he has he's given us light. That's what he's, he's calling us. That's the main thing. That's why we are called, we are chosen. We have to declare it because it says uh, in Matthew, let me get my Peter 8. Excuse me. In Matthew, it says, <laughs> Whoever then relaxes one of the least of these commandments and teaches them, so shall be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But he who does them and teaches them shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. Today, this year, we are called to be great. But we cannot great if we know what God is saying to us and we are not doing it and we're not teaching them. You know, Jesus didn't just teach. Jesus obeyed first before teaching. Because all of us are looking at each other. How come you are saying such things but you're not obeying? Right? We would like to look at each other with integrity. How come yet he is um he is a man of integrity? How can you how can you live such life? If you're not if you're not doing what you're supposed to do so each of us becomes an example and that's is that the way that God is making us declare his goodness to all of us so <clears throat> if we have to be we have to we have to know what God is saying to us he's teaching us to obey and to teach because if we're not going to teach then we are we're not faithful to what God has called us to be and so he calls us to be men of honor. So as we as we see ourselves, our defects, I'll, I'd like to I'd like to uh, suggest the word honor to have an as an acronym. Okay? H O N O R. As as I say the 
the particular word, let us reflect on our defects, not just to say, oh, I feel so bad about it, but it's, it's a way for us to move forward. Because all of us <coughs> wants to be better. No one here wants to say, I'm already good enough. We all want to be better persons. We all want, we all want to exceed ourselves. No one wants to be a mediocre person or a, a person of average because, oh, because all of us as Christians are, are called to be great, are called to be better than what we are right now. So number one, H, we have to have humility. What does he say in, in the Bible about humility? Any volunteer? Sorry, sorry. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, Matthew 18 verse 4 Louder bro uh, Whoever humbles himself like this child Is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven Let's wow. give a big hand for yeah. our brother yeah. 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 One, one more uh, Humility from Peter 1 chapter 5 to 6 Humble yourselves therefore under the mighty hand of God That in due time he may exalt you there you go. Oh, another one. Happy birthday, bro. Good. Okay. <laughs> uh, 1 Peter uh, 5, um, chapter 5. <clears throat> Likewise, you that are younger, be subjected to the elders. Mm -hmm. Clothe yourself, all you, with humility uh, toward one another. For God opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Amen. Alright. Thank you, bro. Brothers, if you want to be the if we want to be declared greatest, we have to be, to be humble like a child. Uh, it's not being childish. St. Paul says when he spoke about what love is in, in, in his letter to the Corinthians, chapter 13, first letter, he spoke about love. After saying all this, he said, When I was a child, I thought as a child. I spoke as a child. I understood that as, as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. We are called to be childlike, but not childish. We have to, to reach a certain or look for a certain maturity. What is a child? Child doesn't, uh, doesn't have much anxieties. He doesn't have any any big concerns i know we have all we have, we have all concerns about our family we have concerns about our jobs but being a child rests his trust in his father <laughs> if you have a ch son or a daughter who's who's saying i have this problem i have this this difficulty what do we say to the to our child don't worry i will help you nobody among us will say it's up to your life. God is saying that to us, that whatever difficulties we have now, any predicament that we are into, perhaps we are looking for a new job, we do not know what the what the world brings with regards to our financial obligations, but look at what happened to you. Yesterday, two days ago, three months ago, has God forgot about you? Has God left you alone on your own devices? God continues to to provide and even in his provision draws us closer to him. We realize that God wants us to be childlike. He wants us to humble ourselves so that our hearts will, re will, will rest on him, that our trust will always be upon him. I'm sure some of us are, are concerned about finances, most of us being fathers. But he says, seek ye the kingdom of God, and all these things will be given to you besides. Let us reflect on that. Am I putting God ahead of all my, my, my dreams, my plans? Am I putting my family for God? Am I just, I, is my, the honor that I want for myself is the honor that the world wants to give, and not the honor that God wants to give that I could get, that I, God would like to bestow on me. So that's number one, H, humility. Let's reflect. And the next one is O, obedience. <coughs> Surely we can, we can say that when we are humble, when one, one person is humble, he can, can follow. He can 
obey the rule, he can follow it up with his humility. What is the example of being obedient in the scriptures? Uh, Luke 5 verse 55 And Simon answered Master, we toiled all night and took nothing but at your word I will let down the nets See, there's this obedience that uh, God is is actually suggesting to us He's not demanding it but it's up to us to answer that obedience Obedience to what He's saying to Obedience to His law uh, Obedience to how He wants us to live as men are we living our life in obedience to God with our with regards to our time? Are we giving our best time for God? Say in the morning when we wake up, what do we do? We look at our phones? Do we have time for God in the morning? Do we have time for God in the evening? Do we have time for God even in our weekly when we go to Mass? <coughs> are we are we obeying what God wants to say to us as, as, as men, as, as being the protector, provider, and priest of our family? And so, it, it follows that when we are humble, we try our best to obey. Even our household servants, are we, are we, are we saying yes to our household servants when they call for a household meeting? Are you even responding to them? Are you attending? The, the teachings that, uh, that are being set because these, uh, these teachings are not just being set for th the sake of activity this is being created for us to learn to continue in, in, in our growth in the Lord and what's the next letter from H-O and then what's the next letter N what is N? Nobility What's what was the uh, what's no written, written here in our in our ID? Noble. 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 What do you mean by noble? Something that is good. Noble. Something that is of high of excellence, right? Yeah. When we speak of nobility, we, we speak of the kings. We speak of those in high places. What did Saint Paul say about nobility? Uh, nobility, being Christian, gentleman, courtesy. And what did he say in the scriptures? <coughs> From Philippi Philippians. Finally, brethren, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is gracious, if there is any excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. So brothers, before when we come before we come to the community, I'm sure we, we can look at our past. It's colorful. Right? All of us have colorful lives. Or probably are not as colorful as Boyets. But just look at that. Boring. When we come to know God. We want to be better, we want to do good. We don't want to even speak of ill humor, like dirty jokes, toilet humor, uh, jokes about sex. We stop saying that because we would like to be men of respect, right? Right. Because when we, when we have encountered God, when we, we want to be, his, to be His chosen one and to declare His goodness, we want our best to express godliness in us so what what can we, be, we do as being noble persons we work hard we work hard in what we do so that we can be an example to our places no one can say that he's a he's a good christian because he's lazy in, in his work because he doesn't submit because he's always late being a christians being men, christian men we are called to be noble, to be of excellence. That's why he wants us to do our very best in wherever we are, so that we can declare his goodness through us. Imagine if you are if you are caught not doing our jobs well, how can we how can we say to them that we are that a Christian is a is a person or a being that has to be an example? So it's difficult 
but it's worth it. A lot are having a difficulty in in uh, in relating to friends or office mates because it's so hard to deal with them because they have a different culture, they speak ill. But what can you do? Start praying for your office mates. Start looking at them as someone that God brought into your life so that you can make them better through your example. Through what you do. Through what we do. Because I and Reg cannot be in your place because that's where God has put you. That's a special call and a special mission. You are chosen to be in, in your par particular family. I am a father of my family because of that being chosen. And you also are called and chosen to be the father of your own family for a particular reason. And that is to bring your family to Christ. Because we will fail, all of us, if we will not be able to bring those closest to us to the Lord. So, whatever is good, whatever is pure, so from now on, I think we should look at what we're doing with our time when we look at some temptations in our telephones, when there are popping up some, some pictures that tempt us. You know, most of us, I'm sure, real men are tempted because uh, real men are being tempted by pictures of beautiful women, right? All of us have this kind of temptation. But you know, we can resist that by asking the Lord for the grace. Imagine, many of us have been tempted to look at this and probably enslaved by this in the, in the, in the past. But God wants us to be renewed. God wants to declare His goodness, his, the purity of a life of Christian through us. So that, don't worry if we have done that in the past. We can always begin again and start anew. God is giving us all the opportunities to become exemplary men, men of honor, men of strength, and wherever He has placed us. Because no one can do that but you, but you and I. So remember, whatever, whatever thing that you have, if there's a kind of temptation that is in, in, in us right now, God has provided for us help. If only we would recognize it as St. Peter said, depart from me for I am a sinful man. Reflect on what our weaknesses are, especially on this in this area. And what is the next one? O. H-O-N-O. -O, on guard. We have to be on guard. This is so important. You know, when your family is under threat, what will you do? You will not sleep. When your tent, when you know that there is a bear here, you will not easily sleep. You will look after your tent, your things, right? Or when you know that somebody is prowling around here, uh, taking taking items in from the tent, you will you will be vigilant. We will all be vigilant, right? So you have to be on guard. And what does it say? Uh, what does Saint Peter says in in uh, to be how to be on guard? In one Peter chapter two verse one, so put away all malice and all guile and insincerity and envy and all slander. So there you go. In sincerity, you have to be true to one another. If we say, "I am your bro," I am your bro. I we're not just brothers here because we're having a good time. I mean, after this, we have to look after <coughs> each other. We have to be on guard. We have to be on guard of each other. And what else does he say in the scripture? Be sober. Be watchful. Your adversary, the devil, falls <coughs> around like a roaring lion, seeking someone to be poor. Resist him, firming your faith, knowing that the same experience of suffering is required of your brotherhood throughout the world. You know that the devil knows us too. If our angels knows us, the devil knows us, he knows our, our weakness. If we are weak in pictures of women, if we are weak in 
in uh, being lazy with our time he will tempt us more so that the more we have to be to be vigilant and what did we learn from the community about being vigilant to grow in the spirit there are five five items that has been given us or probably uh, some of us who are not yet member members uh, this is going to be a big help number one is what prayer it is important to pray it is not that we pray only when we need something of course God wants to give us everything that is good for us and he wants us to ask but then we have to be consistent if I will that's that's the gospel today right what is the gospel today to be insisting on prayer the judge an unprincipled person even if in, in his illness in his being a bad person doesn't want to grant what this widow wants because of her persistence she will he will grant what does this widow is asking so we have to pray <coughs> we have to pray for our weakness we have to ask first for our weakness we have to ask for the holy spirit to help us see what am i really weak on and accept it acknowledge it so that when so that you know that that the enemy is going into that field you know the devil the the first way that the devil can be defeated is to know his presence you know in exorcism the reason <coughs> why they ask the ex, the exorcist would ask who are you he asks the person the the spirit and the person of possessed who are you because the moment that the devil or the demon gives his name it's a sign of his defeat so that's what we should do too we should we should look for the weaknesses that we have when we examine ourselves look for it so that that point already we are already winning because this is my weakness I will ask God's help and my brothers to help me on this particular situation perhaps you're having a problem with drinking perhaps a brother can see you maybe can help you with that addiction or the other with any other addiction that we, ha we are having perhaps you are easily upset perhaps you have a problem with temper maybe you can you have to pray for that you have to pray for the weakness and ask your brother for help what do you think should I do and we go back to letter H you have to accept it and be humble about our weakness you know I have a problem with my temper too when I was getting when, when when I was here in Hong Kong I was starting on I we went to Macau one time and we lost our seat I was so angry uh, I wasn't in the community yet I was so angry because we lost our seat and I have two infants with me and my mother then and my father were still alive and I was cursing everyone in in the ferry but then I realized it's not a good exam it's not good if my children grow up this way you know there was even a time that I will relate to you I, I have been a part of the community and somebody was kicked or somebody kicked me when we were going for uh, for the MER the marriage enrichment I was already part of it some of you know this I was kicked without I was kicked by this uh, uh, drunken guy he, he was he kicked me because I was on the way and I don't know why and so I got I, I, I thought I should not re uh, retaliate but uh, the Lord I, I didn't ask the Lord's help but I asked myself to get even <laughs> so what happened was and my wife was looking at me and she's, she's saying in, in her as she looks at me she's, what are you going to do but I was I was really upset that time so I I, I retaliated I, I, I fought back so there was a commotion uh, there was a big big uh, commotion in the ferry and it's a good thing that there was no police <laughs> if not I would be in jail even say I would be detained and the thing is it happened when we were having a going to have a recollection a, a marriage enrichment imagine that so the devil doesn't stop so when I realized that you know when when this was happening in the in the in I was telling the the facilitator 
I'm going to fold up my Christian life first so I can fight this guy. So there's no rest in being a Christian. <laughs> so during the talk, I was always the one being a topic because I, I made a bad example of what I did if, with my reaction. So I don't want you to go into that. I hope you will not end up like that. But if God wants you to, to, to go over that, maybe that's a reason. And that's why I'm saying pray for your, for your ills. And I've been praying for that. I've asked the Lord to help me, to, to help me with my anger, to forgo, to forget, to forgive. Because I realize that makes me a better person. And He wants me to be a happier person. And so, prayer is important. And the next thing is scriptures. We have to, to study the scriptures for us to declare God's promises to others. Because we cannot express what we do not know. And the next thing is sacrament. Do we go to confession? Is it regular? Is it regular as we as this yearly band of brothers? Are we going to confession at least once a week or once a month? Or do we go to confession only when it's Holy Week? All of us needs to be strengthened. We have to be strengthened by the sacraments too. That's why we go to Mass. Because that's the point of grace. God gives us the what we need. It's like a vitamin for us to live the spiritual life. So examine ourselves now. Am I really going to confession regularly? So that I can battle my ills? Am I going am I regularly going to Mass? And I'm am I going to Mass on time? Am I putting effort in preparation for the Mass? And the next thing is serving. We have to serve one another. We have to serve our family. Because out of that growth in loving God, we will be serving naturally. It's an outpouring of your love for God. And number five is fellowship. It is important that we gather and to speak about God, to learn what God has done to us. And that makes us an example for one another. Because a brother that is helped by a brother is like a strong city. That's, that's mentioned in Proverbs chapter 18 verse 19. So we have to be in fellowship with each other. And you know, we become better because of what you see the good in each other. Boyet is a happy guy. I'd like to be like him, to be a cheerful person. Reg is... It's a person of uh, conviction when he speaks. I'd like to be like him. All of us have these qualities and it comes together when we, we, we realize the good of each other when we come together. For example, in this kind of setting. So brothers, look at one another in that aspect that you can be an instrument for one another. And finally, brothers, are. What is R? H O N O R. First is what? H is what? Next one? Obedience. Guard. And then the last one is uh, resolute. 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 That means you're firm, you're convicted to what you're doing. I think you're, the reason why we, are, we, we know that apart from good time, we will get something out of this, right? You agree? Yes. We will get out of our camaraderie, our brotherhood, as we enjoy. But more than that, we look forward that our conviction helps us to look at heaven. And what does it say in scriptures? It says in uh, 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 9, verse 24. Do you not know that in a race all the runners compete? But only one receives the prize. So run that you may obtain it. Every athlete exercises self-control in all things. They do it to receive a perishable wreath, but we an imperishable. Well, I do not run aimlessly. I do not box as one beating the air. But I pommel my body and subdue it, lest 
after preaching to others, I myself should be disqualified. That is a warning for all of us, for me. Even if I speak here, what what happens, what, what's scary is when, when we all get to be called and you will look down and you will see me below. That's scary. I wouldn't, I, I, don't, I wouldn't want to end up that way. But all of us ha in our conviction has, has to be living this life of sacrifice. In spite that some of us are having difficulties, make sure of that. That it has a use for us. That it, becomes, it makes us stronger to be Christians. It makes us see the good of the sacrifice, the trials that we're experiencing. Because God is allowing those things to happen to us for a purpose. So that we can realize that in all things that is happening to us, it is a source for us to see that heaven is not far. That in all our struggles, as long as we connect it with God, there is that use for us that in our conviction, whatever happens, I want to be part of that, of that promise in heaven. Now, you see Peter, even if God knows that he's, he's a person that is always changing in his mind, you know, when, he, when, when, when uh, Jesus asked, who do people say that I am? What did the apostle say? Uh, you are Elijah. Who else? You are a prophet. And what? And and, uh, say, and Peter said, "You are the Christ, the Son of the Living God." And Jesus said, "No flesh and blood has revealed to you, but but my Father." So he declared that Jesus is 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 God. He is the Savior, and it's a gift. All of us are given this gift. We don't deny that anymore. Jesus is God. It's just living it because we know that we are chosen and we have to declare it. And Jesus said to him, to Jesus told him to strengthen his brothers because he knows that Saint Peter is going to be tempted. He's going to go through a lot of difficulties. You know, there's a story that uh, when uh, Saint Peter was going out of uh, Rome because he wants to avoid being martyred he met Jesus along the way and Jesus told him Kovadi and he uh, I mean Peter asked Jesus master where are you going Kovadi Kovadis and he said I'm going to Rome to be crucified again and he realized that God wants him to go on his mission it is tough for us to have this kind of vision, probably. But we have to be faithful. There will be temptations, difficulties on the way. But God is with us. That God wants to declare His goodness to others through us. As a parting, I'd like to tell you the reason why I wore this is because of the story that I'm going to tell you. It's about these 40 martyrs of Sebaste. There are these 40 soldiers in the reign of Emperor Licinius in the year 320. And during that time, Constantine declared that Christians can express their faith. But Licinius, on, on ruling his eastern part, doesn't want to accept it and he wants to fight Constantine. And this happened in Armenia in a town called Sebaste, now called uh, now in the town of now in the eastern Turkey and that time Lysenius said uh, everyone has to offer sacrifice to a pagan god and this uh, legion uh, belonging to the 12th legion called the thundering legion they were strong men but they were Christians and so their, their commander asked who among you are Christians because the, there's a decree that you have to show allegiance or uh, give offering to the pagan god. So what they did, they said, we are Christians. And then they surrendered themselves and the, the commander said, you have to renounce it. And he knows that this, 12, uh, this uh, 
these 40 soldiers are the strongest. That's why he doesn't want to lose them. That's why he's giving them, he's giving him them praises. <coughs> you are good men of courage. You have, you have so much to, 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 to have in the future. So you have to offer. But then they said, we cannot offer anything but to God only. And so they were taken in to be tortured. And once more they were asked to, to renounce their faith. But they said, we will renounce our faith and even our life we will give to Christ our King. And the commander was saying, you will, you will lose your rank, you will lose all your privilege. We will, we will, we do not care about that. We would like, we offer our life to Christ. And so what the commander did was to torture them. They, they, they were put in a lake of, uh, of ice because that, that happened during the time of winter. And so they were asked to strip and take off their clothes. And probably tonight we will do that. Go <laughs> there. <laughs> I'm just kidding. It's a bad sight. We will not do that. Okay, it's a bad sight. So they were asked to strip naked and went to the lake. And it was freezing. And they put hot waters of uh, a tub, hot tub of water, so that if you would like to, to renounce your faith, you can just jump into that hot, comfortable water. It's a temptation for them. So they were singing and then praying, Oh, Christ, you have, you have destined us to be brothers in this life. Make us and help us to be brothers in eternity. I think it's the same call for us. So in the evening, while everybody was, was shivering in, in cold, one, one of the soldiers fled to the water to the boil to the warm water because he couldn't take it anymore and then their prayer was to make their 40 numbers intact they were actually saying uh, victory to you O Christ and to you and from thee the victory the victory is crowned so that they want to be crowned as, as saints so what happened that this first this one guy went to the warm water but the contrast of the temperature temperature <coughs> killed him so there's all there are only 39 soldiers when one of the guards saw it uh, that one of them left and he saw that there was a light go coming from the sky and like there were halos going over the head of each soldier and there were crowns coming down for them when they prayed for it that they be crowned with God's glory and he stripped his, his clothes and he went and jumped into the ice and the 40 men became 40 again the 39 became 40 and then in the morning when they they passed away their 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 legs were broken and they were burned and now they are they are forever remembered and not the emperor that that persecuted them. We are called to be like that two brothers in a different way. We are not called to be, perhaps we will not be stripped and taken into, into a cold temperature or ice or different kind of, of suffering. But you know that God has destined us to be great <coughs> in our particular way. We are all soldiers for God. It's just that we have to be, live a life of honor in humility, in obedience, in nobility, and always on guard with our uh, resolute conviction that God wants to hold us for His glory. But we cannot re reach that if we will not be able to support each other. So the question, brothers, brothers, what is my weakness that keeps me from being a faithful soldier of Christ? And, and I hope we could reflect that here today. And when we go home, there's something that we have brought, that's something that we have taken in so that we will become better persons from this cup. So, uh, let's look upon each other as help. 
because God has given us the strength of one another. As we say, glory be to the Father, to the Son, and the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, Amen. 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 Amen.